I always knew I was different, or that I was a little weird. But I didn't think that it was because of my personality type. The female INTJ is introverted, intuitive, thinking, and judgmental. Wow, what a lovely combination. I also didn't know that we make up only 0.8% of the world's population. Yay. Hey guys, my name is Lydia and I recently retook the Myers-Briggs test because it came up in conversation and I was curious as to what my result would be because I haven't taken in a while. And I'm so happy I took that test because now everything makes sense. It literally makes sense now why no one will ever fully get me. You know what? It's fine. Everything is fine. I'm okay with being a one woman show for the rest of my life. So I'm here to give you what you came for. I usually do videos that are more like philosophical and motivating people to pursue creative career, but this one's kind of interesting and I just, I really wanted to film this, so I hope you enjoy. Anyway, so here's the real tea on how it is to live with one of the rarest personality types in the world. And boy, it is not easy. You see, female INTJs, we have major serial killer energy. Or I guess serial killers don't really have much energy and that's what make them serial killers. Yeah, this is exactly the sort of shit an INTJ person would say. But anyways, people think that we don't have emotion, we're narcissistic, we're brats, we're super intelligent, but we're brats all the same. And I'm here to confirm that it's true. All of the above, it's true. You see, as an INTJ, my version of fun is giving myself work. And that is why I'm a chronic workaholic. That's also why I filmed a chronic workaholics tips for time management video because it is my thing. Like I love to just keep adding things to my itinerary because you know, 24 hours in the day, how can we make the most use of this? It has gotten to the point where I am trying to start my own business, DJing, working on producing music. I have four jobs now, you guys, four jobs. And I'm going to start school again in January. So I don't know which one I'm going to try to cut out of the equation. Cause to be honest, I would rather do the jobs and not do school, but you know, I'll get my degree. But even with all of these things that I've added to my life, I'm not completely satisfied. Like literally last week, I was having a freak out moment and I was like, wow, I am only working, you know, 25 hours a week. I need to make more money and work more. So within one week, I got three more jobs. Like this isn't normal. To me, this is normal. But as I'm saying this out loud, I'm starting to realize how weird this is all sounding. And I understand now that in my videos, I might seem kind of pushy and like, come on, you can do it. Trust me, everything I say is just because I have this personality type and like, to me, this makes a lot of sense. So take whatever I say with a grain of salt in my videos, but I guess this video is explaining why I'm like this and my real personality. I think the funniest thing is how female INTJs are in social situations. Cause first of all, when I was reading up on the INTJ, I was like, this is so spot on. We like having a uniform. So, I mean, come on, all black all the time. On the website I was reading, it literally said that INTJs usually just wear a monochromatic black look or gray look. So maybe gray will be my new thing. We'll see. Maybe one day I'll have all gray hair and all gray outfits. I think that could be kind of cool. We're very like organized people. We like having a uniform. But another interesting thing, especially for female INTJs, is that the INTJ personality on its own is a very masculine type of personality. And this is exactly why we have the rarest personality type in the world if we're female, because people don't assume that most women would have these characteristics. For example, when I am in a meeting, I just feel like I need to be the one who's, you know, the leader and saying all these things and I hate being told what to do. And I'm not saying all men are like this, but there is a tendency. You know, there's quite a positive correlation, but for some reason, female INTJs are on more of that masculine side. That's probably also why I didn't really do well in an all woman environment working wise. I just, it's so petty, so dramatic. A lot of times working with a lot of females or women means that your conversations have a bit of like emotional burns or like, it's a lot, you know, but with guys, you can be straight up. And also I love personally that I work with basically just men right now because 
Who else am I gonna play competitive foosball with at the office? Party situations are also very funny. Like, besides for the work environment and tending to like to be around more guys than girls, whew, my social interactions sometimes are hilarious. Okay, time is very important for me. And if I feel like you will be a waste of my time, you're a waste of my time and I won't spend time with you. And oh, that makes me sound like an awful person, but it's just, that's just the way I think. So for example, if I show up to a gathering, this actually kind of happened recently. Um, four friends, I was friends with one of them. They wanted to go shopping and I was like, cool, I need to meet new people because of COVID. This will be a great opportunity. Immediately, we sit in the car and they're playing country music. And I was like, absolutely not. So right off the bat, I knew that we weren't gonna vibe because I just, I'm, I'm a techno person. Country music from Canada is not really my thing. We get to the store and it's kind of bad, but just like all their phrases, like everything they were talking about to me seemed so insignificant. Like who cares what filter you put on your Instagram story? I just knew I wasn't gonna vibe with these people. And it was so embarrassing, but I literally called my friend who I was supposed to hang out with way later that night. And I was like, can you come here now? And she was like, no, but you can tell that you need to come to my place. So that's what I did. So I only hung out with those people for 25 minutes and then I never saw them again. It's actually really interesting, but in schools, like in classrooms, I will sit down and spend the first day of class kind of analyzing the room. Don't get freaked out if you're friends with me. Like I've definitely done this with you and that's why we're friends. But what happens like on the first day of class is I will sit down, analyze everybody and I'll be like that person. That person is gonna be my best friend for the year. And seriously, like this happens 99% of the time. It's just like, I don't know if it's a gift. I don't know if it's like manifestation that I'm like manifesting these friends because I'll only put effort into them if I'm like, you have cool style. I fuck with that. No, it's not only what you wear, it's not physical appearance. There's just like this energy that I can really feel off of people and I don't really know if that's an INTJ personality type or just me being a kind of strange individual. Like, of course, of course, I would have a channel on YouTube that's about deep chats in all black. Like, uh, of course, an INTJ person would come up with this. So that being said, that was my rundown on how it is to really live like as an INTJ. Um, clearly it's problematic and it's obviously gonna cause me a lot of issues in the future, which is why I'm such a fan of promoting, you know, pursuing your own career because maybe you just have the personality type that's more dominant or more in a leader position or more analytical. And uh, yeah, welcome to the club of people who are the most annoying employees in the workplace. So yeah, I hope this video was interesting for you guys. If you are an INTJ, please let me know. We can be friends because we are the only people who will understand each other fully. And of course, I'll see you in the next video.